city manager support. That's it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to apologize if the wastewater presentation was taken as a surprise. In my mind, we do these studies to evaluate what our needs are, so we don't have to provide them. Um, I mean, we 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 have so many needs in, in various parts of our infrastructure that have not been addressed over the years, and I'm sorry if we have so many needs, but you know, and we're one by one are looking at you know what needs to to take place. I, I did schedule uh, the presentation to take place at the work session. Right. Um, I mean, to me that it's a better forum for it, but we had a scheduling mix up. It moved to the regular session, but I'm sorry for any surprises. Staff did not know the numbers, and we didn't know what CHA would come up with uh, as a recommendation uh, until last week. So it's not like we were sitting on information for an extended period of time. So, and I do want to clarify on the compensation study. Uh, I did not make a recommendation of a particular course of action. Right. All I did was recommend back in previous budget that we look at salaries from an outside perspective and have them present the recommendation. So that was their um, that was their recommended uh, alternatives uh, to address salary needs. I nor any of staff have made any recommendations or any I did any any decisions on our part on what to recommend in, uh, of those alternatives. So. On your report, uh, you see just, uh, and I hope you find it handy that uh, we have upcoming meetings. Just so, you, uh, as a reminder, uh, January 16th, uh, we have the joint public hearing with the Planning Commission on the um, comprehensive plan amendment for the urban development area, and that's to uh, to uh, make sure we are eligible for future smart scale funding through VDOT. Um, we are planning to meet with VDOT staff at three o'clock. Uh, just to talk about the smart scale requirements if any one of if you are interested in attending that meeting. January 23rd, we have our next Joint Services Committee meeting with uh, county representatives and constitutional officers. Uh, January 30th, we had to reschedule uh, because of conflict with the auditor schedule, uh, but uh, the 30th at 5 o'clock will be our joint meeting with the school board uh, to discuss the, uh, the, the various budget issues you're aware of. Uh, February 6th, uh, you all have agreed to, to use that date uh, for our budget planning uh, session with the department heads to present their, their needs for the upcoming year. And then I would suggest for the March uh, work session, uh, I would like to hear for, uh, from, from you all on what your goals and priori priorities are related to the 1819 operating budget so that we can plan accordingly when we start putting the budget together. Uh, in the month of April so and then also uh, sometime in mid-March we haven't settled on, on a date uh, we're, we've, we're we're looking to do another joint budget planning session with the Board of Supervisors if you're so inclined to discuss the the various joint service services when did you say um, the uh, joint budget with Board. Is that going to be in an evening or the the March the mid March one? Yeah, we're we're looking tentatively around the twenty second. I'm waiting on the county to decide on a day. But it's not going to be one of those all day Friday. No, that would like to be a Thursday evening. Okay, like we did last, last year. year. Okay, so that's good. With that's all, good. So. Yeah. It's called the Ides of March. <clears throat> Moving on, and we've touched on this, but I just want to reiterate that the Department of Housing and Community Development approved the initial phase of the Jackson Street CDBG planning grant and have awarded the $40,000 for the next phase of the project to develop solutions for our identified needs. Also, I want to thank Stevie Steele for attending the CDBG training workshop in Richmond in mid-December so that we can uh, consider moving forward with that uh, sometime over the course of this year or next year for CDBG funding for that project. Uh, next, I. Uh, I uh, want to let you know that the landfill self-construction is completed. Uh, it is now pending DEQ inspection, so we hope that with, is within the next few days. Uh, also, installation of the new scales is nearing completion, so uh, we're almost fully operational with, 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 with everything new there. And while Steve is here, I do want to commend him as well as Alan for 
keeping on top of those things and, and, and finishing that project under budget. Uh, and, and also, um, while I'm uh, speaking of the landfill, please keep uh, employee Scotty Hubbard in your thoughts and prayers. He, uh, he works uh, half time at the landfill and he had suffered some, some pretty serious health issues and uh, he's recovering from, from those as we speak. So, uh, Moving on, I want to note uh, Keith White's uh, water plant supervisor completed uh, last month a three day management and supervisory leadership training program through the Public Utilities and Water Works Management Institute. It's a lot of work, so. Uh, next, the Virginia Office of Emergency Medical Services is awarded uh, two Rescue Squad Assistance Fund grants to the Rescue Squad for three LIPAC 15s and three computers. These were presented to you all a few months back. Um, we do not have a match in the budget. We'll be asking for that at, at the uh, at probably the next meeting, it's a 50% match, but it's a total grant uh, award of uh, slightly over $56,000. And then next, I want to uh, thank again Interim Police Chief Miller for her continued leadership and departmental improvements. Many, many of the things she's been working on is in response to the organizational assessment completed by Greg Jarvis. Uh, several changes have been implemented in the past few weeks, and uh, they include uh, one, going to a 12-hour patrol shift. That started uh, Monday, January 8th. Uh, second, we transitioned to part-time school resource officers. Uh, well, that'll, that'll go into effect beginning tomorrow. And just so you're aware, uh, retired Chief Ruffman and Butch Brown are coming or working part-time in, in, in those capacities as part-time SROs. So we feel uh, working part-time and having, having that, those dedicated positions as SROs will actually put more Time, more more hours in the school because what we had we'd had a practice in the past of pulling our SRO to fill patrol responsibilities and so forth when people were out and the reality was we didn't have as many hours uh, in the school as what we probably should uh, number three we were in the process of reorganizing our and flattening our organizational command structure to better meet our administrative and operational needs well essentially rather than having a a, a hierarchy of, of rank will have two first sergeants overseeing the patrol and, and all the other uh, various functions of the police department. Uh, and then I also want to point out that Anthony Morgan is in the final steps of, uh, of the hiring process. He will be here next week and uh, completing the final steps. He, and we are targeting mid to late February to, being, to begin employment. If all goes well, uh, we might be able to do a squaring in at the February meeting. Uh, and then uh, also related to the police department, I uh, want to note that, uh, of course, I think most of you know, Joanne Smith, long, very long time employee, um, retired in December. Uh, Marjorie Wickline has been hired to, as the new administrative assistant in the, in the police department. On that note, I also want to point out that Lori Humphreys has been hired as accounting clerk for human resources in central accounting. We're glad to have her on board. Uh, and then today we had our kickoff meeting for the joint radio system project. Uh, just want to note that's a long term project. It should be completed by late 2019. So it's going to be a lot of work along the way. A lot of our initial work is going to be related to the Smith Duke Tower site, making sure we get all the pieces in place there for that tower. So. And then lastly, I want to thank the Public Works employees and, and, and Mr. Dressler for working very long hours in cold weather over the past few weeks, as well as um, uh, they cruised, we had crews out on Christmas morning removing snow. So it seems like cold weather, snow events and water breaks and everything happened 3 a.m. on holidays. And, uh, uh, but, but they've worked a lot of hours in uh, removing snow and responding to dozens of water line breaks. Uh, we've also had long hours in the water plant, waste, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, BB alluded to the event that happened there. Uh, our staff was quick to respond to that. Staff immediately responded. First responders uh, were involved and we were able to keep uh, any hazardous material from going into the river. Um, and uh, so that, uh, that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. One quick question. Under the joint radio system project, do we have representation from the volunteers on that committee? It's not a formal committee. I mean, they're certainly welcome. I would, I would welcome that as we move, move along. I mean, that's, um, 
you know, with the public safety director, mm -hmm. one of their roles is to coordinate with fire and EMS. So I hope that from a staff level, they don't necessarily have to attend the meetings, uh, but have they are certainly welcome to. Have you extended the uh, invitation to have a representative, theoretically the captain of the squad, chief of the fire department, that type of thing involved? I, yeah, I believe they have been invited in the past. I mean, it's, it's, it's a loose organization, but I, I know they are aware of the project. And, certainly invite I, them to participate. I think it'd be important if they were to be included in, you know, these discussions um, for a variety of reasons, but I think it would be very important to uh, include one or both as they, as they de and the memberships deem fit. But I think it's very important that uh, their input is uh, considered. We'll make sure they're aware of the, okay. of the next meeting. We're gonna, of course, they have, they're, they have conference calls on a weekly, if not very regular basis, but as far as meeting regularly, mm -hmm. I, it probably will be on about a monthly basis. Okay. 